Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, I am going to have a conversation with Prince from the afterlife. Mm. You guys know that if you've been around Above Life Channel for a while, you know that this channel is in part because of Prince, because I started channeling Prince way back in 2016 when he first made his transition into the afterlife. If you are a Prince fan, check out the Prince playlist here at Above Life Channel. Lots of videos for you. And I got to honor where I come from that regard in that regard. But I've been a psychic and a medium for over 15 years now. And so the print stuff, that was just my entree into channeling celebrities. Now, why celebrities? Because they have powerful connections with you. You have powerful connections with them. They are influential. They can provide insight for all of us. Unique perspective about human life from their afterlife viewpoint. So it gives us a lot of great information. Okay, so today is a beautiful day. As you'll notice the sun popping in and out and I will keep my sunglasses on most likely because I got really sensitive eyes here out in Minnesota. And yes, I'm in Minnesota and this week, is, the week that I will be sharing this particular channeling session is the week of Prince's birthday. Now, if you're a Prince fan fam follower, you know that Prince did not actually celebrate birthdays later in his life because of his Jehovah Witness religious practices. He didn't celebrate birthdays, but everybody who is a Minnesotan and is a Prince fan from Minnesota <laughs> knows that they still celebrate. People still celebrate here, okay? So, in fact, I, I believe it's his birthday that's actually like Prince Day or something here in Minnesota. All right, so right now the times are very turbulent to say the least in Minnesota, Minneapolis and St. Paul and the surrounding suburbs. There's a lot of chaos and I'll, I think it's a really great time for us to get some insight, some good positive purple vibes from Prince the Purple One. After the recent uh, death. I use the word death instead of the M word because YouTube sometimes doesn't like the M word used in things and because then you have to like flag it and have all this stuff on it. So after the recent death of a black man at the hands of a Minneapolis police officer who is now in custody and more charges to come for others that were involved or should I say who didn't get involved and lots of outrage from our community here in Minnesota, in the Twin Cities metro area, and around the country. And lots of anger, lots of upset, lots of grief and sadness and cries for change and really a lot of intensity. And today is so, so, George died on Monday night, Memorial Day, and I'm recording this video on a Saturday. And for the first time ever, we had a curfew last night, like a military state kind of curfew, because there are lots of people that are pouring into Minneapolis and, Twin and St. Paul. They're twin cities, you guys. Like there's a river in between, but they're basically two huge cities that kind of form one metropolitan area of the Twin Cities. And then there's rings of suburbs around there. I'm in one of the, probably the secondary, second to third ring of suburbs probably is what I would be classified at. So I'm about 35 minutes south of St. Paul. And what well, kind of south, west a little bit. Yeah, I'm a little bit west too. But there's, a lot of concern for all the people that are pouring in that aren't protesters. They're like militia groups and white supremacists and anti-government groups and anarchy groups and things like that. And mixing that in with the local elements of people who are not wanting to protest or not wanting to be part of the community who are just angry and stuff, you know? who want to cause problem, problems basically are really messing it up for people who want to peacefully protest in the community that wants and needs to come together. And it's just, oh, there's a lot, 
there's a lot. So we're going to talk to Prince because he grew up in North Minneapolis and understands the pain that's happening right now. So Prince, and I know you've been such an advocate for like police brutality. And to me, I'm like abuse of power. That's what it is for me. And, and that's how I define it. And also specifically racism, equality, equity, all of it. And I know that you've been active in that before. So do you want to talk to us? Can you have a, a conversation with us? I, and, I, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to talk to you about this because I, <laughs> you know, I don't like controversy, you guys. I don't like drama. I don't want to stir the pot. I don't want to be part of some bandwagon of, oh, you know, let's make change. Let's do this. Everybody, you know, taking advantage of the, the situation that is deeply affecting Minnesota, which by the way, I am. I am a Minnesotan, born and raised. I am here, this is my state. So people who don't belong here, when driving here from other places across the United States, which they have been, because they were arrested in St. Paul last night, all the rest that occurred on Friday night in St. Paul, according to the mayor's press conference, the mayor of St. Paul, who's awesome, by the way, incredible speaker, very, just inspiring as far as leadership goes. He said today at the press conference that everybody that was arrested in St. Paul on Friday night was from out of state. So get out of our state. Go take care of your own business. You want to cause trouble? Go to your own neighborhood. Jeez, so yes. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, I'm going to get a lot of comments on this one. But I'm, uh, too. Prince says, you about done. Yes, I know. I know, yes, I'm about done. What, what, give us some words of wisdom, Prince. Like, first of all, what would you do if you were here? What would you be doing? He says, I wouldn't be mixing it up in Minneapolis. I can tell you that. I wouldn't be in Minneapolis right now. He says, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't be doing that. There's lots of ways you can make your voice be heard, he says. There's lots of ways you can make change, you know. And for me, I would offer support through music and money but you all wouldn't have known that part <laughs> when i was alive you wouldn't have known that part so it was um i in one of the the friend groups i'm in they're very they're major prince fans major purple friends of mine and then there was a mention i think from paisley park one of their posts on facebook about you after the Trayvon Martin shooting that you had a rally, a dance rally um, for peace or for change at Paisley Park. He said, yeah, yeah. He says, you got to raise the love. That's what's got to happen. You know, you got to raise the love vibration. Hate, hate caused this problem. You know, hate caused this. And it's not something that's going to be just, you know, instantly healed overnight. There's nothing you can really do. It's just superficial, you know. It's just surface. The wound is deep, you know, many of us are born with it. You don't know what it's like. The color of your skin doesn't cause you to immediately have a instinct to be Okay, so I can't match the right word. He, what I'm, how I'm going to translate it, you guys, from what he's saying is alert. That causes, like, the color of my skin, because I'm white, and, and he, um, is saying I didn't understand. I don't. I wouldn't understand necessarily how it would feel to be born with a wound, with a, a higher level of alertness in order to keep yourself survival. He says you are a, a victim waiting. You are a target. And he says, back in the day when I, he's like when I was, you know, when I was younger, I was in St. Paul and Minneapolis and. We used to go to clubs and things and, you know, we'd play and you know that there was discrimination. I mean, you know it, but you just kind of, you try, you try to turn your head, you know, not real, not get real, uh, can't let it take you off your course. You know, you got to focus on, on what you're there for and what you want to do. But I experienced racism all the time and that's just like, it's, 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 it's just, it's a part of, of this landscape, the world that we live in. And that doesn't mean it's right and it's not, it's not something that, he 
says, you know, in the civil rights movements, you would think that something would change, that it would change, right? You would think that things have gotten better. Oh, it's gotten better. It's gotten better. But he says, I would argue that it hasn't gotten better. The people that have the money and the power and the people that are white and mostly the white men that are in control of everything, whether it be a record company or a government, that's a problem. Okay, but Prince, you didn't even vote. Like you, you're very publicly, you had conversations where you didn't vote. You said, I, didn't, I don't vote, I don't get involved in that. So it seems like you didn't really do everything you could do yourself to create change. <clears throat> you have to do with, you have to do it, do with what you believe in, he says. You have to do with what you believe in. Okay, so like he's saying, like, so he literally shows me, you guys remember, the version of Prince that I connect to sometimes you might not necessarily instantaneously recognize because he has this higher level viewpoint, an ascended viewpoint where like a teacher, like almost not a teacher, but like a philosophical like viewpoint where he's showing me an image, like a circle. And it's a light, light kind of a lavender color inside the circle. And then he's showing me all of these little dots, these little yellow golden dots inside the circle, lots of little yellow like points of light inside the circle. And he shows me the circle and he says, within your, what you believe, your belief system, the circle of what you believe, this, this is a cycle, he said. It's, it's, not, it's, it's the community that you were born into. It's the culture that you live in. It's the, the society that puts the, the boundaries upon you. You don't even have a choice to set your own boundaries. You've got to work within the structure of the belief system that you have, but for an African-American person or a person with brown skin, there is an extra layer of expectation, boundaries, confinement, restriction that is set upon that. And so you don't have that, is what he says to me. You don't have that, that extra layer. Okay, so Prince, I have a woman layer. I'm a woman. And because of that, people in like the White House, for example, think that women are inferior and um, don't really see the value that I offer. So I connect with my own value and create my own belief system based around what I want, the desires that I have to make a difference in the world, what the kind of relationships I wanna have with my family and my community, in my work, that kind of a thing. So I see that piece, but I also know that that's very different than a skin color piece. I know that the skin color is, <clears throat> you can't transcend that. Like, how do you transcend that? You don't change that. He says, I don't know what to say to you about, I don't know anything about being a woman, <laughs> he says. I know about being with women, but I don't know anything about being a woman. Yeah, I know. I know. And I don't know anything about being an African-American. I don't know. That's the thing too, Prince. So for us white people, can you give us people like me who are so vanilla, have no concept of <clears throat> how to help support change racially? How... I mean, because the, the, the talk now, the rhetoric now, the, the, the messages that are shared now from people about civil rights, about racism, are all about how I'm a racist because that's just part of my belief system. Like me, I was born a racist, basically. Like, that's kind of the little belief system that's being placed upon me now. And while I don't intellectually, I don't feel like, and personally, I don't feel like that's true, there has to be some level of truth to that if other people who are in minority classes, uh, minority, is class the right word, you guys? Minority groups, or not even minority, let's, uh, that even sounds totally disrespectful to say, but people who are African American or who have brown skin are, <sighs> see, I don't, I don't have any kind of, I, I don't know how to have that conversation about Mm, 
well, how do I say this? I don't know, white people like me, like a middle-class white woman who's had privilege and still has privilege and lives in my little suburbia area who is pretty f removed from the protests unless I choose to go in and support and show up, but I'm leery to do that. Why would I do that when people like on Facebook are telling me, well, you don't know, you don't know what's going on. So you're just, you're like belittling our, you're belittling it because you are a racist. You're just a racist. And even though you don't mean to be a racist, you just are. So all of a sudden I'm like part of the problem, which I understand that the systems and the structures and things like that, that I have a privilege to be part of, don't see me specifically as a problem. And we're created by white people to keep out people who have different colored skin. I understand that that part, the institutionalization of it, the heritage, the lineage that I have, because I'm a white person, yes, in that way, I guess I inherited that racism, that I'm I, uh, inheriting that. But I don't believe, like, I don't believe that about myself. I don't feel that about myself just because I don't know or I'm ignorant. Even if I try to educate myself, I don't know. I feel like I'm damned if I do and I'm damned if I don't. And this isn't about me, you guys, but I understand that a lot of my audience is wh are white women just like me. So Prince, educating me, having a conversation with me, helping me to hear your stories and understand your experiences so that I can hear your truth helps to enlighten me, helps me to, to, to respect where you're coming from and it doesn't make me an expert. It doesn't make me know how to, to um, make things better necessarily <clears throat> without your help, your assistance. So what, like, what can I do? I mean, can I do anything? Is there anything I can do? Really? Is there anything I can do besides vote, 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 vote? What you didn't do and that does really rub me the wrong way. <laughs> He's like, yeah, we, you know, there's one thing you shouldn't talk about. It's religion and politics. I know, I know. He's like, politics, Bridget. You and I will not, we will not ever be on the same page with politics. I know. And it's not, he said, it's not about a party, you know, parties and anything like that just divides you, he says. So, so tell me, help me understand so that everybody else can also understand. What do we do? What do we do? Well, the simple fact that you're asking the question means you care. And you have to go beyond that. You have to do more than that. You have to listen. You have to really listen. You have to just shut your mouths and let the people who have been underrepresented, let them speak. Let us speak. Listen. And you got to, and, and, and it's true, you know, people do learn from the stories of others. So you got to share those stories. You got to help to spread the words of African Americans. And, and of, and I'm going to say underrepresented classes, because I also want to include like Latinos and um, Mo, uh, Hmong and Somali and all the different cultures and things like that that are here in Minnesota as well as across the, con the country. And all of their, their voices come together. You know, they form a chorus, but the individual stories are what we can learn from, is what I'm hearing you say, right? He says, it's just not gonna happen overnight. You, gotta, you can't just do it once. You gotta do it all the time. You gotta be willing to show up, shut up, and listen. I know, I know that people mean well when they say that to me as a white woman I feel like that feels like I don't want you here then when you say shut up when you tell me not to speak it makes me feel like I need to that I don't I shouldn't be there in the first place he says and that's exactly how African Americans have felt their entire lives that's how we were born so now you feel a little bit just a little bit and you can choose not to feel that way. That's, uh, put on, that's put on you by your choice, by the guilt or the shame or the tolerance that you've had your whole life. I, I'm not, he says, I, I'm not saying it's your fault. I'm not blaming you. But you're going to be what keeps it the same or what 
makes the change happen. It's not just let the change happen, but you amplify the voices of the African Americans. You share the poetry, you share the lyrics, you share the music, you buy from businesses that are other colors than you. You support organizations and charities that are other colors than you. That's what you do to build the communities of color, to give them strength, to give them voice, to give them power. That's what you do. You consume their products, you purchase their services, you donate to their charities. That's what you do with your white money. That's what you do. And you spread the love you gotta really focus on the fact that this is here, this is present, this is now. And you gotta focus, don't lose sight of the purpose of all, why all this is happening, why all this is happening because it is way beyond time for change. It is, it is way beyond. It is, everything is just completely unearthed so that you can replant seeds together side by side. So would you do a dance party? I would, I would, I would do a concert. Uh, I could see you on top of First Avenue in Minneapolis, right on top of the roof there, just singing. He says, um, no, nah. he says, nah, 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 Paisley Park. We have a big party at Paisley Park. The fun's going to organizations to help clean up the city because that's what's gonna be needed. That's, if you really wanna show up and help, that's what you do, you, you come out after, in the aftermath and you work side by side and get dirty in that community as you help them clean up the streets, the businesses. You help, you gotta show up for that stuff. You gotta show up after, not just right now when you're mad and angry and when it's hot. You gotta do it after, for, for a long, long time. You gotta consistently show up and be there and be present and be willing to consistently be there and be present and be willing. There's a lot of pain. But don't make, it, no, don't make a, the mistake of thinking that this is a new, problem that this is a new wound circumstance or situation yeah the name's different but the situation is the same situation a person in power took a life a white person took a life of a black person and the white person had the power and the black person did not It is important for you to acknowledge that the way the man died was without his voice. And so now that voice is gonna be so important moving ahead for all of those involved as the community comes back together again. There's gonna be music about this, isn't there? Oh yeah, yeah, I hope so. As Prince said, I hope so. Music is healing. It is. You know, I can't, I can't really offer you anything that's gonna make you feel any better. You gotta feel. You gotta feel uncomfortable. You gotta feel bad. You gotta feel unsettled. That's how many black people feel every day of their lives, just going to school, walking down the street, being in a public place, being in a place with white people. There's always this underlying what if. So if you're unsettled, then good. That, that's progress. It's not a bad thing. When you suffer together, you can heal together. I see a band Sly and the Family Stone, I think, or Earth, Wind and Fire, both those two bands, and that music, you guys, whatever that music is, there's something that's connected or related to that. Are there other spiritual teachers or mentors for us that we can look to during this time to help educate us as white people to understand 
how we can be better members of society together, how we can bridge the gaps, how we can be supportive of our brothers and sisters, how of, of different skin tones, how can, I mean, I probably sound so ignorant. I apologize if I do you guys, but this is true. This is who I am. This is who I am. I don't know, you know? Can you give us some other mentors or, or, or folks that we could look up to to, like MLK Jr., I see that right away, obviously. He says Aretha, Aretha Franklin. I'm like, wow. At a J Jones or Fitzgerald, I can't tell. Etta, he says Etta. Um. Oh, thank you. Nelson Mandela, oh my gosh, beautiful. Really beautiful energy. Oh, wow, that was really nice. I just felt Nelson Mandela energy. Wow, Prince. Yeah. He says, yeah, you want to feel peace? Yeah. Talk about a man who's been through it. Yeah, he said, yeah, yeah. Maya Angelou. Nat King Cole. Natalie Cole, his daughter. What about Malcolm X? <laughs> There's adversity, you know, mix things up. Yeah, yeah. I feel more, um, why do I say F. Scott Fitzgerald? F. Scott Fitzgerald, I don't know. Um, he said, he's like, he's like showing me education, learning, like great speakers, great writers, great authors, great musicians, like looking to them to inspire us to connect with their gifts and amplify the energy of what they have to offer instead of their skin tone, basically, like their gifts that they have to offer, their contributions to society, not limitations because of their skin tone, but recognizing that in the time that they lived, yeah, they were limited because of their skin tone. Can you imagine if they weren't? Like, ask yourself, what if, the, what if that person was white? Then what? How successful, how rich, how famous, how influential could they have been? There's another African-American woman, but I can't, I, I don't know exactly who it is. Like, it's, it's not Oprah, you guys. <laughs> it's as influential as she is and as awesome as I think Oprah is. It's not her. It's somebody else, though. I don't know who she is, though. She's alive now. It's not um, like Michelle Obama. That's not who it is. Older, an older woman that's African-American. That, I don't know who it is, though. I, I don't. And to answer some of your questions, because some of you like yell at me about or are like, Bridget, why don't you just ask them what the name is? Well, it doesn't always work like that, you guys, because I get information in multiple ways. Clairvoyantly, I see that's the easiest way for me. I sense and feel that's also an easy way for me. I don't always hear exactly. It's, it's tr difficult for me to hear. I hear bits and pieces, so it's, it's tough. That part, I don't always get everything, because that's not what Above Life Channel is about. It's not about being always being right. I'm always right. It's about getting the information and having the, the real conversations that are going to provide insight to you. They're going to inspire your spirit and give you some hope. Prince, thank you. Thanks for having a conversation with me. This is a hard conversation to have. He says you're going to share it, right? Yeah, I'm going to share it. Do you have any insight? Can you share any, any words of wisdom or anything inspiring to us in Minnesota here as we're dealing with this? There's so many different pieces, you guys, I can feel him. Like he's trying to be calm, but he's saying you gotta stay angry, but not be violent. You gotta be calm, but not complacent. You gotta be ready. It's gonna be real obvious what needs to happen. It's easier to get lost in ambiguity 
and you just step back because it's too hard or you're like hey it's you know there's excuses like I'm too I'm white so I don't know nobody's gonna want my help because I'm white um, it's not oh poor me it's just it's I don't know it's true right Ah, see, he said, no, 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 see, 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 no, 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 that's not an excuse. Your skin color can't be an excuse now. <laughs> he said, you can't make that an excuse now. That's not going to work. He says, that's not going to work. You got to take back the power. And you got to do it through love. And you've got to, you got to be willing to stay, stick with it. He's like, you got to be willing to stay with it. He says, I would uh, recommend that you all uh, take care of yourselves and each other. Maybe have some, you know, watch your favorite concert. Listen to some music together, you know, have someone be your DJ and hang out with your friends online, online, you guys, online, like Facebook or something. Have somebody spin records and, you know, that kind of thing. You know, be creative. He's like, be creative. <laughs> you know, he's like, you know, social distancing. So he's like, be creative. <laughs> like, yeah, we can be. Us in Minnesota, and we're, we're creative in <laughs> Minnesota. He says, it will pass. It will pass. It's going to take time, though. He says, it's going to take time. It looks like at least three more days, you guys. Oh, my gosh, three to five more days. Oh, my goodness. It's Saturday today. It's going to take time. All right, you guys, I wish I had more like, woohoo, positive, inspirational stuff, but this is real life stuff. And I think it's kind of deep for us to be connected this way. And this is real and authentic and very raw conversation. So for all of the viewers here at Above Life Channel, for our community, thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of this community and for spreading messages of love and power through love. It's really important that's what's needed right now at least in minnesota oh my gosh we will accept your prayers and your positive healing energies that love prevails instead of all those crazy terrorist like groups that are here trying to take over you know the protesters that are peaceful need space and room and the community needs room to grieve so if we can if you guys can help send positive prayers and energy to help create that healing part and allow for their voices to be heard and continued support for the progress of change that would be real helpful here thanks you guys thanks for being here and thanks to prince for the conversation <laughs>